Today, we finally gonna be doing it. We're gonna start giving y'all the top fives, the top tens, the top 25s that y'all been waiting on. And we're gonna start it off with a bang. We're gonna build it up. Now, this is gonna be a series for me going over all the positions. And we're gonna end it off with the top 25 greatest players of all time. So if you guys do want that, just go ahead, just keep showing the support. We're gonna break this joint down in the systems. We're gonna go from point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward to centers. Now, there's gonna be some people out that's like, this guy's not a point guard, this guy's not a shooting guard. That's really on you how you wanna feel about that. Because at the end of the day, you gotta understand this is all my opinion. I hope whenever y'all do stuff like this, that this is based off of what you know, what you seen, what you heard, anything like that. Don't base, really actually more so don't base it off what you heard because when people do that, they don't really put any of their opinion in it. They just really be saying what everybody else say. That's just facts. What I'm doing is pretty much just based off me. Just that simple. Now, there are ways that opinions can be changed. That's time. Time can change a lot of things. That's just really what it is. But right now, today, this is my list for the top five point guards and everything else from here on, on four, I got it all made. So all y'all need to do, if y'all do want this stuff to continue, is show the support, subscribe, like, all that good stuff out the window. Let's hop into it. Let's go! So today, we're going to be starting off with the point guards. And I'm going to be honest. If I had to say a position that was hardest, I'm going to be honest, it's not point guards. Or not really hardest. Actually, no, no, no. Hardest ain't the word for it because when it comes to making a point guard list, I think it's I think it's up there. I think it actually may be the hardest. But I'm thinking, I was going to say centers. I don't think centers is that hard for real when it comes to having a top five because you kind of know who's at the top, top. I think when it comes to the order, it may be hard, but you kind of know who's in the top five for real as a center. Point guard is where it kind of can go a lot of different ways. Now, I was going to do some rules and regulations. Maybe I do like a time period because it just, the game has evolved so much. But I'm going to be honest. I wanted to do kind of more so a relative to your era type of deal. I wanted to do it based off your greatness, what you accomplished, and how good you actually were. So, yes, accomplishments will have something to do with this. Yes, how good you actually were will have something to do with this. And yes, your your era will have something to do with this. So, um, some eras are just not as hard as others. And some er eras are just harder than others to be a point guard in. So, that will have something to do with it. But it's not going to be the end all be all. So yeah, let's just go ahead and hop into the list. I'm not trying to make y'all wait no longer. Let's get into it. Okay, so when it comes to the list, we have some honorable mentions. Now, there's going to be honorable mentions on every single one of these lists. So it may be, it may make you even more mad that your player will be off the list if they're not even honorable mentions. But yeah, these are my, this is my list and this is where I got to go with it. So honorable mentions. The least likely person that I would have put on here that I felt like had to be an honorable mention is John Stockton. He is an honorable mention. I know most people may even have him top three. But for me personally, when it comes to greatness and how good you were and accomplishments, yes, he is like the assist leader of all time. He's the steal leader of all time. But I'm not going to say that those accomplishments don't really weigh too heavy on me. But like those accomplishments just really don't do it for me in comparison to the top, the people that's in my top five. Then when you go alongside that, it's I get it. MJ, it was he played in MJ's era, um, but yeah, I think I would just take pretty much every other point guard I'm gonna go ahead and talk about on this list over him. Um, another honorable mention is Steve Nash. No, these honorable mentions are not in order, so I just want y'all to understand that I, John Stockton probably is the la least likely, but these are not in order. This is just what it is. Steve Nash, in my opinion, as a point guard. Um, when it comes to what people act like point guards are, I think he's really good at that. But I think in terms of the different eras he could have played in, he played in the 2000s. I don't know if you understand what the 2000s was, but 2000s was a very, very defensive era. So, like, I'm not going to get into all the different things about why people kind of discredited a lot of different things. But the 2000s defensively, space-wise, is was just what that was. Now, when it comes to the Mike D'Antoni, I do think that may have something to do with it. I think Mike D'Antoni offense do kind of boost a lot of the players like the Steve Nash's, the James Harden's. But it is what it is. They, they played in that system. I'm not going to dock 
the Currys, the Jokic's because they play in a great system as well. The, the Jordans because they play in the triangle. The Kobe's because they play in the... I'm not doing that. I'm going to give you your credit for what you did and what you did. Whip. So it's just what it is. Steve Nash, in my PM, one of the most efficient players, one of the more underrated players when it comes to scoring in the playoffs sometimes. I think he's had... I think he's had a little bit more hate than he kind of more so deserves because i guess he got two mvps that people don't think he really deserved but at the end of the day i think steve nash impact wise offensively wise one of the best point guards of all time defense may not be what it what you want it to be especially for me as a person that really does value defense but yeah that's just kind of really what it is um up next jason kidd jason kidd in my opinion one of the most underrated point guards of all time um it really just was kind of the accomplishments what kind of hold, held him off the list. But Jason Kidd, what he did in all the different scenarios, he just was one of those players that was a do-it-all player um, when it came to what it took to win. If you if you needed him to play defense, he was going to be a great defender. If you needed him to pass, he was going to be a good passer. Um, some teams he was a good scorer on. Some he really it just it really wasn't his game to really be the main go-to scorer. But he kind of did develop in his career to become a better scorer. He developed in his career to become a better shooter. And I think Jason Kidd is one of those players when it comes to their career arcs. Is one of the most unique career arcs in my opinion, based off how many teams he went to, how his game developed, how his game evolved, and all the different ways he was kind of utilized in a point guard. And just to show you how versatile of a player he could be he could be the star he could be a role player he could do a lot of different things and he could be a great player for a lot of different teams so i really do think jason kidd has to be and in, in, he has to be an honorable mention for the greatest point guards of all time and last but not least for the honorable mentions no this is not a top 10 i made sure it was in the top 10 chris paul chris paul has to be an honorable mention for a point guard um i'm not mad at anybody that puts chris paul jason kidd in the top five to be honest it's just the accomplishments that's kind of holding Chris Paul back. But when it comes to on-the-court value and on-the-court play, it's not too many point guards that have a higher peak and prime than what Chris Paul was from the New Orleans days to the Clippers days. Um, even on the Rockies, he was really well. I wouldn't consider that his prime because what I consider a prime is a lot shorter than what most people consider a prime. So, like, say, for instance, people, some a lot of people think Braun may have still been in his prime when he was on the Lakers. I don't even think that was even remotely close to his prime. So the way I just look at primes is just way different from a lot of people. So Chris Paul, in my opinion, definitely is an honorable mention. One of the best point guards, one of the best two ways, six foot, one of the best pound for pound players of all time as well. But yeah, Chris Paul had to just be an honorable mention on my list. Let's hop into the top five. <laughs> top five, starting in, coming in at number five, Jerry West. Now, when it comes to Jerry West, the real thing that really kind of just holds him back across from pretty much everybody else on this list is how ahead of his time he was. He was just so ahead of his time, it really just hurt him. He played in an era where there really wasn't no three-pointer. Um, he was doing things and shooting shots that just really made no sense when you go back and look at him. Um, but Jerry West, um, in, when it comes to playoff translation and all this other stuff, he had it all, bro. He had the shot. He had the playmaking ability. He had the he had the playoffs jump. He just really just couldn't get it done against the Celtics. That's just really what it is at the end of the day. If you want to talk about the accomplishments, that's really the only thing. But I'm going to be honest. Jerry West is honestly one of the better players of all times. I know he played in the, in the early stages of basketball. But one thing I'll say about the uh, errors that people really kind of take for granted. Like, a lot of people try to say that Kobe was Kobe was Jordan after Kobe. But the thing is, the re way I look at it, Jordan, it was harder for Jordan to be Jordan than it was for Kobe to be Kobe because there was no Jordan before Jordan. Jordan was looking up to people like Dr. J. And the skill set that Dr. J and the skill set that Michael Jordan had was so leaps and bounds, like no comparable, that when Kobe came and tried to emulate what Jordan was, yeah, Kobe's skill set had to be a little bit more because Jordan is just so much athle more athletically. But he had a he had a way better template than Jordan had when it came to having a skill set and a versatility. So when Kobe came and did it, yeah, he took it to another level when it came to skill set wise. Was he better than Jordan? No, but he would actually had the template when it came to people like Jerry West in them early days. 
it's a lot harder for him to really just set the standard of what he was doing for his time as a point guard. And another thing I like to say about Jerry West, Jerry West as a point guard, doing what he was and being what he was, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of funny because when people say a prototypical point guard, they saying like a pass first player. You go back and watch Jerry West. He was doing a lot of like shooting and a lot of scoring for those teams. Yeah, he could pass, but he was really more so a scorer than a passer. And Jerry West, in my opinion, when it comes to all the things that he did in his career, I would have to put him at number five. Coming in at number four, when it comes to coming in at number four, I had to go Oscar Robinson. Now, Oscar in this next pick, you can really go either way. You can go either way with three to five. I, I don't think there's really no debate for between the top two. I think that's the perfect order. But from three to five, and even maybe an honorable mention, I'm not really too mad at it. But Oscar comes at number four. When it comes to the style he played, how good he was offensively, how good he was at pretty much being a rebounder, how good he was at a lot of things. Now, I will say there is like a little bit of a tax you got to kind of do on Oscar because he played on the, the highest pace era ever, <laughs> like literally ever. But um, Oscar, another player that was just far ahead of his time. And the fact that he didn't have no template for what he was really doing, he was really before his time. He was one of those early big guards. Um, a lot, another person that I would say is not a pass first guard, another point guard that's like pretty much going in trying to get his buckets. But he also could pass at a really high level. He could rebound at a really high level. I think out of all the top five, I think he may be like the second best defender. Um, but that's not really saying much for the top five. I'm a real big defensive guy, but that's not really saying too much. But, yeah, I think Oscar on those Kareem teams is very underrated. I think Oscar on those Kings teams was very underrated. I think when people look at Oscar Robinson, they don't really give him the credit that where it's due. And I'm really here to give Oscar the credit where it's due. Now, put him at number four may be a little lower for a lot of people. But be real with you. Be real, Being real with you, Oscar Robinson is one of the best players of all time. And there's not really much I can say about that. All right, next, it has to be Isaiah Thomas. Um, Isaiah Thomas, what he did in his career, um, I think will forever be extremely underrated as a point guard when it comes to his scoring ability, but not just his scoring ability, his passing ability. I think that Isaiah Thomas is where that stamp of like being a pass first point guard really came into fruition. But I do think Oscar, I, I mean not Oscar, but Isaiah Thomas was one of those point guards that not only was a pass first player, but he also was a person that really made a lot of um, mistakes that people nowadays would get hate for. He's also another one of those players that took a lot of shots that nowadays they'd be like, that's not a point guard. But he was also getting you like in his prime season, getting you 10 plus a season or assists per game. So it's really kind of weird how you kind of rank some of these players or talk about point guards for a lot of people. But in my opinion, I think Isaiah Thomas is easily, well, not easily. I think there is a debate between Isaiah Thomas, Oscar, Jerry, you can really go whatever. I think Isaiah Thomas is one of the most underrated point guards in the league. or Not league, but all time. I think the real jump that puts me at this level for Isaiah is because of his defense. I think him playing on some of the best defensive teams of all time also may boost that a little bit. But I do think he was a good contributor to that. I think if you put a lot of these other guys on those teams, they may be even better because of how much better offensively they may be. But with that being said, I think the fit with him being a good defender, being a two-way player, his passing ability, his scoring ability going as a combo is kind of crazy. Now, me looking this up, it was kind of funny looking at uh, Isaiah Thomas and like how many turnovers he was getting in his career. It's kind of funny. But yeah, Isaiah Thomas, my personal opinion, top three, um, one of the best pound for your pound players of all time, one of the most underrated players of all time, one of the most accomplished players of all time. He's one of the players that was able to beat Jordan. That's one of the biggest accomplishments I think that a player can really be able to have. I think be able to beat Jordan, whether you want to say it was before Jordan was reaching his time, before Jordan team was good enough, I think that accomplishment is still one of the best accomplishments to the day. Now, is Isaiah Thomas a little salty sometimes? Yeah, he can be salty sometimes, but I'm going to be honest. It's really it's really what he want to do, and that's really what he can do. If he want to do that, it's really up to him. But, yeah, Isaiah Thomas, I'm going to have him at number three on the greatest point guards of all time. <sighs> all right, coming at number two, a player that people love to try to put him at number one, Stephen Curry. 
Stephen Curry, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Steph, if I had to say the holes for his game, um, when he came to his prime, I don't think his defense was good at all. I think he was a terrible defender, a bad defender. Um, but when it came to him, as he got older, for some reason, his defense got much better. Now, I will say this. Curry's prime is weird, and this is why I was saying this during the playoffs, because if Curry wins a ring this year, after the 2021 season that you could really argue is just as good as the 2016 season, I would say it's not because of the fact that it didn't lead to as much team success, but I will say that he did have to do more of a carry job in 2021 than he did in 2016. But I think that the team being better and him just being kind of the sole reason why that team was so ridiculous in 2016 also has a real big deal with why I hold 2016 in such a crazy light. But that 2021 season is, in a lot of ways, is maybe even better. I'm not going to lie. Because of all the different things he was dealing with without Clay and all this type of stuff, you could really argue it was even better because that team was so bad at one point and he just kind of was willing them to the playoffs at one point. But yeah, Curry, he kind of, you could really, Curry is one of those players that's really hard to like try to do that prime stuff for me because I don't really look at people having like these extended primes. But it's kind of really hard to argue against it because what he did this year, what he did last year in the playoffs, um, what he did in 2021 is really just kind of hard to argue against it. I thought we was at the end when he had them five games and he was so bad in them five games. Um, but he came back and jumped back and went crazy. I can't lie. So Curry is one of those tougher people to rank because I would say in his early prime, the defense was bad. Now, as he kind of got a little bit worse offensively, I think his defense got a lot better. But you could really also argue in this next these last three years, he had one of his best seasons as well offensively. So it's just tough to rate Curry when it comes to, or not rate Curry, but rate Curry. But offensively, when you try to think of it, I'm going to be honest with you. This may be a wild statement, but I literally don't know four better offensive players than Stephen Curry. So he has to be a top five offensive player of all times. His ability to shoot just creates so much for everybody on the court. And him being the greatest shooter of all time, him being one of the best offensive players of all time, him being one of the most impactful players of all time is really what gets him to this level. And the fact that he still can do it in the playoffs and the fact that his prime is getting extended, I think one thing we'll have to say about these eras as it keeps going, if people primes, it continues to get better like longer and longer there has to be something that they're doing differently now than they didn't do last then and i think we can see some of it but i think there's also some things off the court that they kind of developed technology wise that you can kind of see but yeah that's going to be pretty much the person i have at number two stephen curry and last but not least the best the greatest point guard in nba history i've seen people say this guy's not a point guard because he's too tall i seen people say this guy's not a point guard because of this, that, and the third. But the real reason why people have this prototypical point guard in their minds that a point guard is a pass first, if we being real, is really because of people like this guy, Magic Johnson. Now, it's really tough to rate who's a better offensive player between Magic and Curry. Um, I think Magic defense ability can kind of get overrated because people will look at magic for what he is as a 6-9 point guard and just think magic is just this crazy defensive player people will see that magic play center in the nba finals and be like this guy is this versatile defensive player magic defensively was not that's just not what he is he's not a defender but um offensively what he can do offensively without really having a good jump shot is one of the most unexplainable things to really talk about he is the best passer of all time let's just get that out the way like he is the best passer of all time it's not really nothing to say there um but for him to be one of the best offensive players of all time just based off the sheer impact he can have on a game from getting his teammates making his teammates better and all this type of stuff it is just 
inexplainable, bro. Like how the like, impact he can get. He can he can turn pretty much any possession to a fast break. He can turn anything into he can turn anything into a great possession offensively. I'm gonna be honest. Like his ability to hit people on cuts, his ability to hit people on the three point line, his, his ability to just find the open man or to make somebody open. It's just a it's, it's just a it's just an ability that a lot of people don't have. Um, I think if Jokic can continue to be on this level of a passer on top of his scoring, then yeah, I think Jokic's passing ability may mutate into something like what Curry has three point shooting, where like his impact three point shooting wise makes it so easy for everybody else on his team that people have to like guard Curry just a different way. When it comes to Jokic, you kind of have to guard Jokic a certain way because he's so unguardable with the ball that pretty much the way Jokic, this is how Jokic thinks when he scored that. Pretty much, if his teammates are missing, that's when he's going to start going off. That's kind of just what Jokic is. So when you put on top of that, he's the best passer in the league right now. It really makes it really hard. So, like, his impact passing-wise, it really kind of makes it impossible to double-team him. So I think people may try to do something like that and try to force Jokic into that conversation with Jokic or Magic. I think it's going to be kind of impossible but I'm not going to lie. The way Jokic play, I'm not going to lie. I, I can't be, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. I'm not going to lie. But Magic being what he is, without having a real consistent jump shot, um, one of the better rebounders of all time at the point guard position, obviously the best point guard at the point guard position in my opinion. Um, it just, the only thing I say about it is, for a lot of these point guards, it doesn't, Magic don't really have to play too much defense because a lot of the point guards, like, just look at it. Curry, uh, Chris Paul was a great defender. Jason Kidd was a great defender. Isaiah Thomas was a great defender. But, like, the Currys, the Steve Nashes, you know what I'm saying? Majority of the best point guards all time, honestly, wasn't really defenders for real. Like, they really were more so on the offensive side of the ball. And, yeah, it's just kind of what it is. Um, I think Curry, as his career has went on, he's become a better defender. But Magic, it just kind of is what it is. I'm going to be honest, though. The Curry fans, they trying to get you up out the way, Magic. I'm still here standing my ground. You got five rings. You, I seen somebody try to say that, like, um, the people try to give Magic the credit where he kind of was in a similar situation to Kobe where you could even argue it was even worse because Magic came into the league as a rookie and he had Kareem on his team. But my thing would be, um, you can't really say that Magic got carried or anything like this, that it was by far the best player on the team because Kareem literally missed a whole game and Magic played center in the finals. And he dominated. Like, and you can say he don't really deserve the, the finals MVP for that year. That's two different things, though. Him getting carried and not deserving the finals MVP, in my opinion, are two different things. He was able to step up when his team needed him the most. And what I would say in comparison to that, because what people try to do when it comes to bring down Magic, they try to do that with Kobe because Kobe has Shaq and people bring down Kobe. My thing would be that when Kobe tried to really be the number one option in the finals, I think there was series in the playoffs from 2000 to 2003 where Kobe was the best player. And that's kind of what the team needed. But Matt, Shaq was definitely just as good. It was just a tougher matchup for Shaq. And in the finals, it was just a lot easier matchups for Shaq. And then when Kobe would try to force the hand like he did in 2004, it just didn't really look so good in terms of, in comparison to how Magic was. I think Magic just kind of always, what I give Magic for, credit for, is the passing. But one of the most underrated things about Magic is the IQ. And it's not really something that you can really talk about enough. Um, him really kind of understanding his role, him kind of understanding that at, as he got older in his career, he had to score more points is where I think um, what really made Magic such a great offensive player is that he didn't just come into the league just trying to score. He came into the league trying to pass. And then as he got older, his team kind of needed him to score more. So what did Magic do? He scored more. So I look at Magic as the best point guard, the greatest point guard of all time. If Curry can take that stamp, I got to give it to him. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of why I'm happy Curry didn't get that ring this year because I'm not going to lie. It would kind of been a little undeniable if Curry got that ring this year because, like, what are we supposed to say at this point? Like, Curry is just, he's just doing things that don't even make sense no more. Like, he's this year he would have did it. I don't think the Warriors would have had a single all-star on the team. Like, he had to bring this last year in 2015 where he was by far the best player. 
Um, he had the ring in 2017 and 2018 where he had him with KD. And I think KD was a better player. But, yeah, it just kind of is what it is. A lot of these point guards, honestly, they always have a duo that's really, really ridiculous when it comes to, like, Oscar with Kareem, Magic with Kareem, Curry with KD. Isaiah Thomas didn't really have no crazy, crazy duo, but he had a crazy, crazy team for real. Jerry West with Wilt. Um, it's kind of crazy how many of these guys had some crazy, crazy good uh, duos, though. It's really, really wild looking at it. But, yeah, um, that's going to be pretty much my list. That's the top five point guards, greatest point guards of all time. This is the starter list. So cut me some slack on how I've, I've really discussed it. I'm going to try to get these better and better as they do go on. But if you do want these to continue, do want the shooting guards, just go ahead and like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Put in some comments down below, some constructive criticism that I can do to kind of make this as good as possible when it comes to how I'm describing it, my criteria, is all that type of stuff. So, yeah, if you guys do want more, just make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, show the support in any way you do or you can. Um, comment down below to help the album. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. And I have to be, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!